Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to The Broken Past. So I want to apologize, it's been a few weeks since I put out the last video. I uh, showed a whole bunch of these um, in an unboxing to, to look at repairing. Um, unfortunately, over the last few weeks, I've gotten a cold or a something or other and I didn't have much of a voice to, to do one of these videos for a few weeks. So I'm just now starting to feel better and I'm really itching to want to get one of these videos out. So it seems like based on most of the comments, plus my own, uh, excitement. I really want to get this orange Game Boy Advance working. So if you remember from the last video when we unboxed and looked at all these, this one along with I believe it was the Game Boy Pocket had this sort of an oily blue uh, liquid on the back of it. And if we look at it today, now that it's been a few weeks, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but it sort of made this kind of a matte sort of a rough texture on the back of the, the shell. So I'm starting to speculate that maybe in one of the systems, um, potentially one of the capacitors has leaked, um, and that might have been some of that electrolyte fluid that came out, uh, maybe mixed with some of the corrosion uh, in some of these systems. So I'm hoping if that is the case, that it didn't do too much damage to a lot of these systems. But let's just start by throwing some batteries in here and seeing if it turns on and seeing what it is that we have to work with. So once again, we'll throw some batteries in here and we can see not sure how well it's going to show in these videos, but we can see right in here there is a lot of blue uh, corrosion on those terminals. So I'm wondering if this might have been what leaked all the, the stuff out. Uh, I don't know, but let's go ahead and just throw some batteries in anyway just to start with and see if it does anything at all. You can really feel a little bit of resistance on that. There's a lot of kind of crunchy sounds. I'm guessing there's going to be some pretty good corrosion on this board, so this probably is not going to start, but let's give it a shot and turn it on. And we have nothing, which isn't a huge surprise. And again, I can't tell. If, it's, if the terminals are bad, if the power switch is bad, or if both are bad. <laughs> I know the batteries are good. I did just test those on another Game Boy Advance. But we have absolutely nothing. Okay. So let's dive in and see what it is that we have to work with on this guy. So just like before, we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, tri-wing screws. So we'll need a special uh, tri-wing bit. Um, and this one's got a Phillips screw down here. I don't remember if some of these have a tri-wing bit down here or not. Uh, this one's obviously got a Phillips. So let's go ahead and start by getting these out. And we can also see if I can get this out. There's a lot of corrosion on the heads of these screws, which could be from that liquid that we saw in the last video, or it could be, I mean, I guess who knows what it could be from. But that's okay. This is the fun late afternoon project anyway to take this apart and do a little bit of investigation. I know for me, working on these things, even if I can't get them fixed, uh, for me is relatively therapeutic. I just enjoy sitting here and coming down in my basement and working on trying to get these cleaned up and working. And again, based on the last video, if I can't get it working, it's not a huge deal. Um, I do believe that the shell is going to clean up nicely, and the goal will likely just be to have this on display. So as long as the the plastic and the shell clean up nicely, uh, even if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. And some of these that you don't care too much about, if they work or not, are always good practice to sort of get some experience in uh, taking these apart and just kind of seeing how they work and what to do when you get to some of the more advanced mods that you, that you, you, know, you might want to do down the road. So let's see about getting this guy apart. I think 
can already tell this is not going to be fun. It is pretty stuck together. Make sure I actually did get all the screws. There we go. So a lot of it is down here on the bottom. There's a lot of resistance down here. There it goes. So that doesn't look too bad on that side. Oh boy. But in here, we can start to see definitely some corrosion. For starters, if we look at the bottom of the cartridge slot, there is a lot, an awful lot. Let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit with some light. An awful lot of corrosion on those pins. And even, I'm really not sure how that's going to show on there, but even inside, there's a lot in there too. So let's go ahead and at least finish getting some of the plastics off of here. Get those out of the way. These will clean up quite nice too with a magic eraser. So even ones that are pretty awful, like this one kind of along the edge, there's a lot of discoloration there that should clean up nicely. And We'll get our two screws. I think I've said it before, but I believe some of these have a third screw in here. I think most of mine, maybe all of them, have only ever had these two, but I, I'm pretty sure that you can find some that have this third screw in there. two screws out. And before we pull the motherboard off, let's take a look. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of that corrosion up here, both on the underside of the ribbon connector as well as maybe on the ribbon itself. But I do have this one off the one that I did the IPS screen swap on. So if we want to, potentially, we can reuse this screen in this place if we needed to. But let's be careful. Let's see about getting this off. There we go. Feels like a lot of resistance on these. So I feel like there's a lot of corrosion going on inside of here. It really makes me nervous. So let's see how bad the underside of this board is. Oh yeah. And we have quite a bit of corrosion under there too. Here we can maybe see it a little bit closer on the ribbon. There is a lot of a lot of trace that is gone. Let's see if it shows up maybe a little better on here. Come on. Come on, camera. Well, that's okay. Yeah, we can see that a lot of that is gone. So I'm going to suspect that at the very least, this display is shot. But let's go ahead and pull some of the rest of this gunk off of here. Yeah, it almost looks like, you can see that outline there, it almost looks like, I don't know, maybe a pop or something was spilled in here. The fact that all of these are relatively let's see if we can hear the sound here <laughs> relatively stuck on there huh okay so now let's take a little closer look at this yeah so we have all sorts of nasty corrosion going on
Okay, this side's not too bad, but for sure this is going to need a pretty solid dunk in vinegar and see if we can eat away at some of that corrosion. So while we're at it, let's go ahead and pull out. Yeah, so there's some over here too, right on that screw head. Let's go ahead and also pull out the battery terminal here. Okay, so that actually seems like that's pretty well seized in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be careful and I'm just gonna try to sit this in the vinegar along with this, uh, but just to let it get up to, to about the top of the terminal so the, the battery terminal itself can just soak in the vinegar. I'm gonna go grab a container and some vinegar and I will be right back. All right, so we have a couple things we need to do here. So first off, picked up a bottle, almost empty, of just super cheap uh, distilled white vinegar. And then I grabbed a few containers. The first one I grabbed was this guy, thinking that this would be perfect for both the board as well as the shell. But I do think that's going to be sort of a waste of vinegar. Um, and as we can possibly see in the video, I do not have a whole lot left. So I grabbed a second container, which is just a little bit smaller, which is gonna have to be one thing at a time, but this will fit almost nicely right in there. It's a little bit of a bump in it. I could probably potentially put that upside down. Um, I'm gonna do it one at a time, do that, and then I'll stick this in here and try to do um, the battery connector since I can't seem to get it out of there. But before I do either of those, I need to desolder the speaker off of here just so I don't potentially ruin that. Um, and I think the easiest way is I'm just going to desolder it off of, I'm gonna desolder the wires off the speaker. I was gonna desolder the wires off the board, but I think I'll just desolder them off the speaker. I think that's gonna be the easiest way just hot enough, which it is. Now we'll go ahead and desolder the one wire and our other. And there we go. So now we're gonna take this smaller container and probably use the rest of the vinegar that I have. Hopefully it's enough. Oh yeah, perfect. And now I'm not sure, whew, vinegar stinks. I'm not sure how well this will show in the video, but if we set this in here, if it all fits in there, you can possibly already see Oh, it's shaking around. Let's see if we can hear it. Maybe. But we can already see a whole bunch of reaction going on. All that vinegar is eating away at a lot of the corrosion that's in there. But what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and just let it kind of work its way through. And once we're done, we'll come back in with the toothbrush and see if we can scrub uh, most of the residual corrosion off of there. And we can already see one of these pads, if I recall, uh, had some pretty, pretty solid blue corrosion on it. So we're gonna see, you can already see that that's pretty much off. Uh, but we'll let this sit, scrub that off, and then we'll repeat the process again with the battery terminal, get that all cleaned up. Uh, and then go from there and see what it is that we have to work with. So I'm gonna do this, we'll do that one, and then I will be back and we'll do the next steps. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna take a quick look here and see what we have to work with. And so far I have to say, I think it's doing a pretty good job. So if you'll remember, um, I'm pretty sure, let's see, 
pretty sure I thought there's a lot of corrosion on these pins, which we can see those are it's pretty much gone. We still have a lot of it down here, but unfortunately this might just be, I don't know, stuck in there or something. So I'm not sure how well that's gonna come out. And of course there's also still quite a bit of it in here. But again, as long as it doesn't, as long as this is not why it's not booting, I'm okay if it doesn't read the cartridges because this is pretty much just gonna be for display. But we'll go ahead and clean off a bit more of this and I'll come in here in a little bit and try to clean it a little bit more. But it looks like for the most part, a lot of the main corrosion is now off of there. So I'm gonna sit this off to the side for a little bit and give and give the shell here a little bit of uh, a little bit of time in the vinegar bath too. So let's see. Oh man, you can just hear it, hear the sizzling. Not sure how well that came across on the microphone, but it's definitely really loud. This is a really weird setup and it's probably, I'm probably blocking the view. But I'm just gonna kinda try to sit this, avoid the sticker as much as I can, and just kinda sit this in here just for a bit and let it eat away at that corrosion. And just see if we can get that cleaned off. What I wanna do after this then I'll give both of these a clean off and some water and then some IPA to dry them off. And then we'll see at this point if it at least will power on. So I will do this for a little bit and I'll be back to try to power it on. Actually, that didn't take that long at all and most of that, most of that green, bluish green corrosion that was on these terminals look like they're already gone. That actually cleaned super fast off of there. So you know what, I'm actually gonna call that good on here. Cause that seemed like that really took care of that. So I guess the next step is to get some of the vinegar off my hands cause that hurts. <laughs> and actually you know what, I'll probably let it, this sit back in here for a few more minutes, give this another bit eat into those pins and then we will rinse it off with some water and some IPA and go from there. So I will be right back. Ouch. All right, so we've given it a little bit of time. Uh, I went ahead and let it sit for a little while in the vinegar, uh, rinsed it off in the sink, washed as much of it off as I could. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, we can clearly see that there's still a good amount of corrosion in the cartridge, uh, the pins there, um, even some still within the the cartridge slot. Um, and just some residual stuff sort of around uh, the edges. Um, I'm not entirely holding out a lot of hope that this is going to work. Uh, one of the things we can kind of see here, there's a lot of a little bit of brown here, um, and even under here as well. Uh, let's see if that shows up in the video, or maybe on this one, maybe not. I'm gonna have to work with this camera and figure out how to focus it better. Um, but there's definitely a lot of corrosion in those traces um, that might end up giving us a little bit of a hard time. Um, what I'm gonna do real quick is Give it a quick once over with a little bit of 99% IPA. Stuff that should evaporate pretty quick. Um, I guess real quick too, looking back at this guy, we can tell, you can see that in the video, that even just sitting this in vinegar for a real short time, um, a lot of that corrosion came right off. But I'm gonna just give it a quick scrub See if I can get any residual vinegar or 
uh, water, hopefully to evaporate pretty quick. And then just give this a quick scrub on a lot of these. And again, a lot of these pins didn't want to seem to get completely clean. So I'm going to suspect at the very least, if anything, this thing is not going to read any games. Just based off of that corrosion, how quickly a lot of this um, masking has just kind of rubbed off as I've been brushing it. So don't know if that's going to really do us any good, but that's okay. Again, um, I just want the shell hopefully to come clean. And I think that's still going to be the case. But for good measure, we'll just give it a quick scrub. A little something to do late in the evening. Actually, I should probably go to bed because it is late, but I'm in the mood to I'm in the mood to do a little bit of work on this. I don't know, for me it's it's something fun to do. I'm either doing this or doing some models or some painting some minis or doing some gun plow. I'm always doing something in the evening to kind of get my mind off of everything else going on. So even if this doesn't work, it's just a quick fun little project to to try out and see what we can do. And I did also go ahead and try to clean up the ribbon cable on this screen. And a lot of it came off, actually most of the corrosion. There's still a little bit of blue stuck on some of the pins. The biggest thing, I really don't know how that's gonna show is uh, a lot of those pins look like some of the traces underneath of the, I don't know, the protectant on the top um, look like they've kind of corroded away that might be possible to try to solder. I don't know if it's going to be worth that uh, personally, but let's go ahead. Let's just see at this point um, where we're at. So I'm not even going to bother hooking the screen up just yet. I want to just go ahead and sit this in here. Let's grab two batteries. And again, these batteries have been tested, so I know that they work. And if I flip the power switch, I'm gonna watch these LEDs and see if I get any light or any indication that it's working. And I don't know if that shows. That looks promising. We do have a green uh, power light. And that's uh, it's a little bit flaky on the power switch, but it does look like it does I guess you can't see it on that part of the video. Maybe you see it on the other one, but it does look like it does make a connection and it does light up. So that, that actually looks like really good news. So let's go ahead. And again, I don't have the speaker resoldered, so obviously I'm not gonna have any sound, but I guess I do need to take the batteries back out. So that I can get this guy out. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna bother hooking up those little ribbon tabs. I don't think that's gonna be a big deal for now. I just wanna kinda sit it in here and see. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the power switch in so I can reach it. And then let's put it all in and throw some batteries back in. And <laughs> let's actually see if this works. Interesting. Okay. So we do have, sorry, there's going to be some glare, I guess, going on here. We do have. Um, we do have a green light, but it doesn't look like we have 
any display. And I mean, that's probably an obvious statement because I think the display is pretty well shot. It's interesting because that stayed on pretty easy without the display. You know what, let's go ahead real quick. And let's turn off this light just to get rid of some of that glare. There it goes. But yeah, for sure, we still have no no display on that screen. So I don't think it matters. But let's go ahead. I'll leave the light off so it might be a little bit dark just for a second. But I'll go ahead and pull these two tabs in just to lock that cable in place. Let's see if that makes a difference. Again, try to get rid of some of the glare. Yeah. We still have nothing. So the interesting question is, is it an issue? Let's go ahead and turn the lights back on. The interesting question is, is it an issue with the display? Of course, there's a little bit of moisture, but I don't think that's going to affect it. Is it an issue with the display or is it an issue with the board? And that is, of course, anybody's guess right now with this. Let's go ahead and pull that display back off. Now, I'm pretty sure, let's see, it's back over here. I'm pretty sure that this display worked fine. Uh, again, I think I pulled this one off of the, the Game Boy Advance that we did the IPS display on. So I'm pretty sure this was a good display. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can kind of just sort of jerry-rig this in place. Let's just see if this works. And again, I know this is getting kind of to be a, a jank setup, just kind of holding all of it in place, but I'm just curious if we can salvage it. Let's see. I don't think it's going to short, but I'm going to go ahead and just hold it up just a little bit. And let's see if. We get any life. And again, it doesn't look like it. No, actually, hmm. Interesting. Not sure if that's going to show. It looks like it. Interesting. I don't know if that's good or bad. So we got something. A really, really slow voltage trickle or something onto the screen. Let's do that again. Turn it on. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, let's turn it off. Let's throw a game in here real quick. At this point, it's also probably worth admitting that I am a bit out of my element on trying to diagnose maybe what the problem is, but it's all right. It'd be kind of fun to try anyway. So now we got a game in here. Again, I have no sound. Let's just see. Turn it on. So I'm not sure how well that's going to show. Let's try it on this one here which is really dark. <laughs> Focus. Let's try that. 
you can really kind of see there how it starts out bright and seems to get darker. Interesting. Oh, now it just turned off. Must have wiggled, bumped it a little bit. And now I can't get it to stay on. Hmm. So what does that tell us? To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting that I the display or the system I cannot get to stay on now. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Let's see. Come on now. Now it's on. There it goes. Okay. Really slowly starts to do that. I wonder if the screen is also bad. Do that again. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what that tells us. It's interesting, though, that it is actually turning on. Let's pull this out. Which is always hard to do from this side. Come on now. Displays in there all the way, but of course there is certainly maybe some corrosion on this side. Definitely feels like there is maybe, I mean, with the ribbon cable on the other display kind of ripped up, I'm really questioning how much of the board is still good. But it's also interesting to see that um, it does light up a little bit after giving it a second. So let's pull this guy back out once more and set that off to the side. And just kind of real quick, jerry-rig this back in. Just kind of set that in there, I think is okay for now. Throw the power button in. the battery cover on drop under batteries and let's just see again if we can turn this on and get power and let it sit hmm okay so now we are getting color in there of course obviously not Right, because it's the old original display, but we are getting lines. I'm curious if we throw the cartridge back in with this screen, turn it back on, and finesse it until it stays on. Which seems to be a challenge. And I can't get it to turn on. Interesting. Okay, let's take the cartridge back out and try it again. Huh. Well, now I can't get it to actually turn on. So I would like to before moving to the next step. Hmm. Okay, well, that makes me curious. I wonder if the screen is actually now shorting out The rest of the board. So I could also be completely wrong. Okay. All right. So let's take this back off again. Sit that over there.
I want to try once more to see if I can actually get it to stay on. Yeah, it stays right on. So I wonder if there's actually a short, maybe? Now it's being flaky. I'm gonna say, I wonder if there's a short in the display, but I don't know. All right, as one last trick, I want to see. So I have another uh, Game Boy Advance here. And I don't know, I know there's different pin uh, sizes or different pin counts for these. And I don't know if this one will match or not, but what I want to try is I want to see if, if it does match, I want to see, actually before I do that, let's make sure that this works. What I want to do is I want to swap out the board in here and see. And I think this one also might have a flaky power switch, but it turns on fine and I have a display. So I'm not sure if that even showed up very well in the video. There we go. You can see it. So I want to try to see if I can swap out that board or swap out this board with that one and see what if I get the same result. And hopefully I don't accidentally short out. <laughs> I don't want to short out the display and ruin this one. Um, but I think it's worth trying just to see. Again, this is just a lazy late night uh, sort of a repair session. So it's more about just kind of learning, seeing what we can figure out. With the end result being just simply cleaning that for display purposes. So let's see here. Yeah, this is a 32 pin. So this one is not going to work. Hmm. Okay. I do think I have another one. Gonna double check that. So let's put this one back together and go grab another one. And be right back. So I went upstairs and double checked and it appears that I actually don't have, unfortunately, my other uh, Game Boy Advances are all 32 pin. So I don't have any other systems to try out and see uh, what might be going on. So at this point, I think what my only option really is going to be is to just see about cleaning the shell and taking care of that. I'm going to try adjusting this pot here. I don't know a whole lot as far as uh, which way to adjust it. I know the adjustments they say to be pretty minor, so I don't really know if that's going to make any difference, but real quick. I'm running out of battery on my camera, but just out of curiosity, I wanted to adjust it and power it on one more time with this different screen, just to see if that made any difference at all. And if not, then I think we are down to just cleaning the shell and putting it all back together and just at least making it look nice. So I adjusted the pot a little bit and let's turn it back on. See if that made any difference at all. And it appears to have made it worse, maybe. I don't see any, any fading on there now. So which is fine. So actually, let's then take this off real quick, just before the battery dies. And try to 
carefully get this back out. And I turned the pot to the right, so I'm going to turn it back to the left. And then back a little more. And try it again. If you've, if you've done a lot of adjustments and, and swapping out screens on these, uh, I'd love to hear feedback on how to know whether or not that's the issue. But let's go ahead again. Let's just try it after moving it back and then a little farther and still nothing. Okay. Well, one more time. Move it back to maybe, yeah, and I should have, probably should have marked it with a little bit of permanent marker to know, uh, give or take, about where it started. So I could have a reference to moving it back, but that's fine, whatever. Okay, last try here. And let's power it on. And you know, I do actually get some signal now. It's faint. It's really faint. It's probably not even going to show up. And my camera just went out. <laughs> okay, so it is really faint. I don't know if that's a pot issue or not. Um, I'm going to play with that since my secondary camera, the battery just died. So I'll play with this a little bit and see if I get anywhere on it. Um, and if not, I think it's going to be time to go ahead and just start uh, cleaning the shell to put it all back together. So I will be back. All right, so real quick, I wanted to bring this up. My other battery is dead on the camera still. And of course it looks like now this has just kind of died on me. Oh, let's see, oh, that's, we're getting a little bit of signal. I've got some flakiness, nothing's quite sitting right. Uh, one of the things that I found out looking online is that um, I moved the sticker that was covering the back. I just pulled it off because it was barely sitting on there. Um, and underneath is actually a hole to allow you to adjust the pot while it's on um, and fix the issues. Now what I had initially discovered was adjusting it was only messing with the, the brightness uh, of the screen and I was getting a whole bunch of artifacts. Um, but suddenly, so I went to turn on my camera and everything else to just make a comment on that. And suddenly I got a signal, but as you can tell, the horizontal sync or the vertical sync or something is way off uh, and it's flickering like crazy. But if I stick this under here and I try to adjust the pot, uh, it seems to actually, we can get it better of course it's probably not at all don't have anything at all even remotely in view of the camera if i adjust it i can actually get it better so we do seem like we have some sort of video now i want to turn it on or i want to turn it off and throw a cartridge in i'm going to guess and doing so is now going to jack everything up, but let's kind of maybe cross our fingers and hope that it's still going to work. And let's see. Okay, so it's still turned on. Even with the cartridge in, though, it's not reading the cartridge. And everything, as we can see, is completely misaligned. Um, of course it's coming and going and now it's kind of faded out again oh now it's back so i'm gonna guess that's definitely an issue on the board that i don't know if it's going to be fixed uh changing the pot obviously helps a little bit but it doesn't i mean it's not going to do 
any of the actual signal output adjustments, which appear to be kind of flaky. Um, but interesting nonetheless. Um, my camera, my other camera is just about dead too, so I will probably try to throw this back on the other display just to see if it makes a difference and then um, probably call it quits for the night because it is almost one o'clock now and I really need to go to bed. So I will try it with the other display. I just wanted to show this real fast while I still had a little bit of battery left and just give you an update. So I will be right back. All right, so it is now the next day. Um, after my batteries died on both my cameras, I spent a good amount of time swapping back and forth, trying this screen, uh, trying the original screen. Um, ended up actually not ever getting that image displayed again. Um, so whatever happened at one point to get the Game Boy logo that showed, but what kind of flickered, um, I really don't know. I swapped batteries. Let's just try it one more time. We'll put in a good set of batteries because I think my rechargeable started to die but if I put in the good set, even doing this and letting it sit overnight, we have a nice green light just off screen here, but we just still have nothing. And eventually, with a little bit of time, we'll start to get an image to show on the screen again, as it appears at some components. Uh, maybe warm up. Uh, I don't entirely know exactly what the deal is, but either way, um, I would suspect that there's going to be something wrong with one of the components on the board that um, drives the display. So I don't entirely know. Um, and I think at this point, I'm going to admit defeat. Um, again, now that it's sat and dried overnight, we can see that there's still, there's actually pieces kind of falling out. Um, some stuff on, on the on the mat. Um, there's still some pretty good corrosion in there. I'm guessing there's going to be a short in a component somewhere. Uh, potentially might be one of these capacitors. Maybe it's corroded underneath of it. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna throw in the towel uh, myself. I'm pretty sure the screen works, um, and I think the flickering uh, is not due to the screen. I think it's still due to something in uh, the driver for the image itself. So I think what that means is that at this point, we are now just in sort of cleaning mode, just to go ahead and clean off everything so I can put it back together and have it look nice when it's all said and done. So I think I bring over my vinegar that still smells like a pickle factory. And let's drop some of these in here and let them start soaking. I already see some bubbles forming from those. We've got a little bit, I don't know how well it's going to show on camera. We've got a couple screws here that also look like they could use some cleaning. Yeah, those are, those are fizzing pretty good in there too. Set that off to the side. And move our attention to this. Now, again, the screen is shot. Um, I'm pretty sure this screen is completely shot. But what I don't want to do, even though it doesn't work, uh, I don't want to get water between the display and the screen lens. So I am going to carefully try to. Sort of twist the corners and loosen it up just enough to see if I can pull it out.
now I have just a whole bunch of plastics. The plastics, the buttons, the acrylic light diffuser, uh, the membranes, all of these are going to go get a nice soak. And then I'm going to go probably follow up with some, uh, um, with some magic eraser and take care of some of this rubber, get that all cleaned up. And then we'll come back and put it all back together. And now we let everything dry. So it's been a few hours now since I got all these things scrubbed down and cleaned off. Uh, I think everything's pretty well dry. So we are ready for reassembly. Um, I've got my soldering iron heating up here real quick because even though it's not going to work, I want to, for completeness sake, I want to solder the speaker back onto the board just so it's there. So while the soldering iron heats up, I'm going to go ahead and start reassembling a few of these pieces that we can do. So first off is putting the metal plate on to the back of the shell. You can see they've got a little bit of corrosion there that I didn't I didn't get clean off in the vinegar and obviously didn't scrub off, but it's okay. It's inside. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Definitely get that screwed in. And we'll also go ahead and go ahead and put our screen back in. And again, I'm pretty sure the screen itself is likely broken, but I want something in there just to at least have, obviously when we're trying to display this, we want a screen in there. And we'll go ahead and drop in our buttons everything else while we're waiting. And don't forget our light diffuser. Put on our button covers. And our start and select buttons that are still pretty yellow. Um, I do actually have some um, other ones that I could have used from some of the other shells that I have, but uh, again, you know, not a huge deal. I'm just going to go ahead and just put this together and call it good. For the moment, I'll set that off to the side. And hopefully, I didn't I didn't realize that my microphone was sitting over the soldering iron, so hopefully there wasn't too much noise in that. We'll get these out of the way. Bring our speaker over. And just see if we can kind of do this the lazy way and just sort of press fit 
that back on. Let's see if the soldering iron is warmed up yet. And we're good. So again, I'm going to try to just do this the lazy way and just just heat it up and sit it in there. Actually seemed like that worked pretty easy. So we'll bring this back in. Wrap the speaker back under there and hope I got it soldered in there. Good enough, I think I did. Reattach our screen. kind of finagle that speaker back in. There we go. And get our shoulder buttons back in place. And one of the things I realized I just did was put the wrong screws in here. So pro tip, <laughs> obviously make sure you keep track of your screws. In this case, it's not a huge deal, um, but I know Tronix Fix just the other day was working on a DS Lite shelf swap and accidentally put the wrong screw in and puncture the front of the shell and ruin the shell. So obviously make sure you keep an eye on which screws go where. And another thing, I realized another mistake that I made. So a lot of these screws, if you'll recall, had a lot of corrosion on them. So I thought it was safe to throw them in uh, vinegar for a while. And you can see the result here. There's a whole bunch of black in there. So what happened, I think, is that the vinegar actually oxidized the coating on these screws. So now the screws themselves are pretty black. Um, I've tried scrubbing them a little bit. Um, I don't know how a lot shows in contrast, but they're pretty dull now. Um, but, you know, that's, it is what it is. It's already done. Uh, something to, to keep in mind for next time, I guess. The big thing is, you know, this thing doesn't work. Um, so it's not a huge loss. I mean, the good thing is if something is broken, any lesson learned or any mistake that you make uh, is a lesson learned for the next system you try to repair down the road. So I don't necessarily think mistakes are bad, but that's kind of why one of the recommendations is that you don't try to mod um, maybe a, a handheld that you had as a kid. Um, you know, keep it, keep it as it is for nostalgia, uh, and then go out and maybe buy another one and try to mod that. That way, if you make a mistake on it, you're not, you don't feel guilty, I guess, for ruining potentially your childhood console. Um, and also just buying cheap ones online kind of give you a chance just to practice and hone your skills and, and see what you'd like to do and um, get better at, um, get better at things after you make a mistake. So, you know, and now I know not to sit these, the screws up there in vinegar for so long. I think they might have been okay if I just dunked them in for a real short burst and then took them back out. Um, obviously, I didn't do that, so they're pretty much just going to be black like that, but that's okay. They're going to be on the back, and uh, again, this is just going to be sitting out for show, so it's not a huge deal. But at this point, we're just going to go ahead and button this thing back up. And I think call it good. So, again, keeping screws in mind, on this one at least, the smaller Phillips screw was down here in the battery compartment. And the remainder of the tri-wing screws are all the same size. 
and they just go throughout the rest of the frame of the shell. And I'm going to try to avoid, I guess, touching them too much and getting my fingers too black. I don't want to get some of that black stuff all the rest of the shell. So mistakes like that one are not critical. Um, you know, they're not shiny, I guess, now on the back, but you know, it's not that big a deal. Even if the system worked, that wouldn't bother me. Uh, bigger mistakes, like if you go back and look at the attempt to backlight an original Game Boy, I completely desoldered the wrong pin. Um, <laughs> those are the mistakes you don't want to make. Um, it wasn't a huge deal. I did manage to sort of set up a jumper wire and make it work. Uh, but overall, obviously, the process was less than ideal compared to just doing it right the first time. So, But that's okay. Again, you know, in the end, this thing cleans up nice, and that's kind of really all that I wanted. Uh, and it gave me something to do, obviously, in the middle of everything that's going on in the world, but also just, just uh, an evening hobby. Uh, it's actually, what is today? Wednesday. I uh, started working on this last night and finished it up tonight. And then I'll probably work on the video later tonight and try to get it out tomorrow. So it just gives me something to do. Um, and it's fun. And that's kind of the key. It's just find something you like to do and give it a shot. And then adapt uh, as necessary. And I knew when I bought this one that it was highly likely that it wasn't going to work. I have to admit, though, that last night, testing it with the other screen that I showed, um, and actually getting a, a you know kind of a flickery Game Boy logo on there, I kind of actually had hopes that maybe this was going to work. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. But let's go ahead and let's just throw the batteries in again one more time. I'm just curious if we can get it to power on and get anything out of it at all. Well, we have sound. <laughs> we do have sound. That's interesting. Which obviously we couldn't test that last night because I had desoldered the speaker in order to, to clean the corrosion. So we've got sound, we've got the power light, and we have a very faint display that the longer we let this sit, of course, again, you probably really can't see it because it's so dim compared to the, the studio lights down here, but eventually it will light up and we'll get a bunch of color on there. I could actually take, before I put the back sticker on, I could actually take the pot and try adjusting it. Which doesn't seem to be making a difference. So, oh well. And I guess lastly, let's take out the batteries. Throw the cover on. And grab our sticker, which I think still has a bit of stickiness to it. If not, I'll go and I'll have to get some adhesive spray and secure it on there. I think it'll work. So there we go. Um, guess I'm saying um quite an awful lot in this video. I don't know. I guess overall, I just fun little project just to clean this guy up. The plastics actually turned out really good around the outside. I don't even think any of that, um, I don't think that Mr. Clean Magic Eraser was necessary. In this case, the plastic was pretty good all the way around. Maybe a little bit of yellowing in there that could have gotten cleaned off with it. But again, if you just assume this is gonna be on display, it's really all that matters is that it it came pretty clean. I was a little worried, like I said, that some of that potential battery or the capacitor electrolyte that had leaked out, I was a little worried that that might permanently stain the back of this, but it kind of, I think it all kind of came clean. So unfortunately, didn't get this fixed and didn't get this working, but I have a nice orange or creamsicle or whatever color technically Nintendo calls this. Um, got one of these to, to put on display now. So 
with that, I guess, if you have any ideas and maybe what I should look at as far as actually trying to get this fixed, I'd be happy to you know, potentially give it a try. I really don't want to spend a whole lot more time. I mean, it's not a huge deal that this doesn't work. I was hoping, you know, if it was something quick and easy, uh, I'm not really certain on wanting to try to maybe reflow those chips that are on the back of the board or anything. And I'm guessing just based on a lot of the the corrosion on the board and a lot of the traces that are that are kind of eaten away that this is probably going to be a lost cause board. But, you know, if you have any ideas, I'd be happy to hear them. I'm not sure if I'll actually get a chance to, to try them out, but, you know, I'm always up for hearing any ideas that you have. So with that, thanks again so much for watching. I have a whole bunch more of these in the last mail video, a whole bunch of the original Game Boys to take a look at. I also have a few more custom ideas that are going to be coming up too. So keep an eye out for that too. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.